In this video, we're going to discover the effect that elementary matrices have on other matrices in a matrix product. Now, we're only going to use this elementary matrix, but the neat discovery that we'll make with regard to this matrix actually applies to all elementary matrices, including the ones we saw in the previous video. So what we're going to do right now is actually carry out these multiplications, and then we'll take a step back, look at the result, and try to give it a nice interpretation. And you'll have to remember why this is actually an elementary matrix. In other words, how it's obtained from the identity matrix. Let me remind you what those operations are from the rows and the columns points of view. Now from the rows points of view, imagine the identity. This matrix is obtained by adding two of row one to row two. And from the columns point of view, this matrix is obtained from the identity by adding two of column two to column one. So keep those in mind when you are interpreting the results. So now let's go ahead and carry out these multiplications. Not too fun a task, but somebody's got to do it. So I'll do it and I invite you to do it independently and try to discover what I'm getting at on your own. Right there. I'll save Havana for manana. Meanwhile, I've heaven in my reach. I found the charm of old Havana in a room by Miami Beach. Ay, 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 had I wings, I would fly every day to the sky to Miami by the sea. Ay, 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 I would save all my dates for somebody who waits there for me. Okay, I've carried out the multiplications, and there is a reason why I use this Sesame Street matrix instead of a matrix with numbers. That's because if I use the matrix with numbers, numbers would just be combined, and it would be difficult to interpret what's going on. So that's why using a matrix with letters is more beneficial in this case. So what happened? How would you summarize the effect of these elementary matrices? on the other matrix in the product. Now it's very clear that in the first case it did something to the columns and in the second case it did something to the rows of the matrix. So that's the difference between appearing on the right and appearing on the left. That's our takeaway number one. When elementary matrices appear on the right they do something to the columns of the matrix on the left. When they appear on the left they do something to the rows of the matrix on the right. And actually, when I was carrying out the second multiplication, I used the rows perspective. The rows perspective is more insightful when the matrix with a lot of zeros comes on the left. Because then, when you interpret the linear combinations of rows of this matrix, they're very simple because there are so many zeros in this matrix. All right, so those are the basic observations. But can we make them specific? What this did something to the columns of the matrix on the left, but what specifically did it do? Well, I think by looking at this matrix, it's very easy to answer that question. And that answer is add two of column two to column one. Let's repeat that. Add two of column two to column one. If you look at this matrix and mentally add two of column two to column one, you will get this matrix. 
Now, does this operation ring a bell? Did we hear about this operation recently? Yes, that's precisely the operation that we mentioned when we were designating this matrix as an elementary matrix. This matrix is elementary because from the columns perspective, it's obtained from the identity by adding two of column two to column one. And what this matrix does to this matrix is add two of column two to column one. It's as if it stored that combination. That's what elementary matrices do to other matrices. When they appear on the right of the other matrix, they will perform the column operation on that matrix that, need, that needs to be performed on the identity to get this matrix. It's as if this matrix started as the identity, then someone added two of column two to column one, and since then, whenever this matrix multiplies another matrix from the right, it performs that very operation on that matrix. It's like a good joke. This matrix was an innocent identity, then it heard a fantastic joke, and now it wants to tell that joke to any other matrix it meets. Except there are two versions of the joke. There's the row version and the column version. So if it meets someone who's to the left of conservative, it will perform a columns operation. And we're about to discuss the exact same thing from the row's point of view. So this matrix tells a different joke depending on whether it meets someone from the left or someone from the right. Uh, there was something there, I don't think I quite took advantage of it. In any case, when it appears on the left, yes, it performs a row operation. What is that row operation? Well, it's clear by looking at this matrix and comparing it to this matrix that it's adding twice row two, excuse me, twice row one to row two. Aha, the precise operation that you need to perform on the identity to get this matrix. It's the very operation that we would have mentioned when we were classifying this matrix as elementary. So whatever you do to the identity to obtain this matrix, that's what we, this matrix will do to any other matrix on the right in a matrix product. Uh, so once again, it's as if it stores that operation and does it to any matrix that appears on the right. So whenever you see a product and one of the matrices is elementary, you first look at whether or not it's whether it's on the right or on the left. And if it's on the right, you think columns. If it's on the left, you think rows. And if you need to determine what this matrix will do to the other matrix, you will explain to yourself the operations that make that matrix elementary. In other words, the column operations that you need to perform starting with the identity to arrive at this matrix. And once you say to yourself what those operations are, you simply need to carry out those operations on the matrix that it multiplies, because that will be the effect that it'll have on that matrix. Same thing here when it appears on the left, except replace the word columns with the word rows. So we have now discovered the effect that elementary matrices have on other matrices and a matrix product. And what would behoove you very much is to go back to the previous video, look at most of the matrices, maybe the first five or six, multiply them by the Sesame Street matrix on the right and on the left, and make sure that those operations that make those matrices elementary will be carried on to this matrix. That indeed, each elementary matrix that we have mentioned, and actually any elementary matrix at all, will do precisely that. We'll perform the column or row operations, depending on whether it's on the right or on the left, that you need to perform on the identity to get that matrix. Make sure that that rule works for all elementary matrices, and it indeed does. I actually have no explanation for why it works, it's one of those things that you notice, check for all sorts of matrices, and then say to yourself, yeah, I guess it works. You don't need to know why, it just does.